Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. You know the drill, we're back at it again with the Reddit stories. So let's jump into it, shall we? I'm 33 weeks pregnant, and my mill finally asked who's gonna be in the room. She hates the answer. Surprise, it's not going to be her. We just aren't close like that, and neither are her and her son. In fact, he doesn't like to be around her. So no, she is not going to be there when I deliver. At two in the morning, I received the following text from her. She's at a casino, despite being jobless, and I would say there's a 95% chance that she's drunk. So, I've been thinking about asking you this for a while, and I finally mustered up the courage to ask. So here it is. Who do you have in the delivery room with you besides fiance, her son, to help you and welcome baby into this world? I responded with the following. Just fiance will be in the room with me. Close friends slash baby's godparents will be in the waiting room just in case fiance needs a break or needs someone to switch out with for any reason. Since I'm scheduled for an induction and c-section, only one person is allowed to go back. As long as everything goes smoothly, people can meet him over FaceTime while we're at the hospital. But since I'm high risk, they want to keep the number of people in there to an absolute minimum. That includes likely having the same nurses and doctor being on call to deliver baby whatever day I go into labor. Fiance and I have talked about it extensively and would rather not have visitors in the actual hospital room unless they say he has to stay more than 24 hours. Then, at the hospital's discretion, immediate family can start visiting. They don't expect more than a 24-hour stay for him, since he's perfectly healthy. It's me that they're particularly worried about. If I'm the only one in the hospital for 24 hours, at the hospital's discretion, immediate family is welcome. I would just prefer one at a time. And nobody under 13 come to the hospital so I can rest. Everyone will get the text when it's okay to come see baby, wherever we are. It might not be for a few weeks though, as we'll need time to adjust. Mill responded with this. So can you swap out close friend with me? I would be honored to be fiance's take partner if needed. And I want to be there anyway, through the entire process. Like, I wanna drive you guys there and be on the property the entire time for any and every reason necessary. I want to be as close as possible to my grandson when he makes his grand entrance. Is there a reason you would wouldn't want me to be your plan B? I don't even know how to respond to this. She just completely disregarded the plan we already made. I want to add, I was living with her and her family when I first got pregnant because my mom died very suddenly last year. When Mill found out I was pregnant, she gave me two days to get out of her house and told me that she would pay for an abortion. I'm very pro-choice, but that's not what I or my fiance personally wanted. She loves her grandson. I do not doubt that. But she's never been involved in the beginning of life with any of her other grandkids, so I'm not sure if she realizes that she's overstepping. How do I approach this? I'll be honest, I think Mill only sent this message because she was drunk at a casino. Some drunk people are weirdly sentimental and emotional, even when their sober selves are cold people that could not care less. I suggest to OP to talk to her husband about it when he wakes up. Then message Mill back when she's sober and explain that you already have a plan that you don't want to change. Who cares if she gets mad? Both OP and OP's fiance don't seem to really care for this woman anyways. So setting a boundary and possibly hurting some feelings in the process doesn't really seem that bad. I personally don't want anybody in the delivery room with me other than my husband either. In fact, I don't want anybody coming to the hospital, even after the baby is born. This is just a special moment between only my husband and I, and our little family. And new parents need time to adjust, and people should be understanding of that. And if people want to get hurt feelings by that, then they can. I literally do not care, and neither should OP. 
Mother-in-law demands my daughter's bedroom. Weird situation. My husband and I live in a small three-bedroom townhome. Before he met me, he told his mother that she could have one of the bedrooms for when she visits. But unbeknownst to him, things changed quickly because he met me and I have three kids. We fell in love and we now all live together as a family unit. Him and I have the master, the two boys have a bunk bed in one room, and my daughter has the other room. For a while, I tried to be polite and placate her. There are lots of nights where my kids are at their bio dads, and other nights when she wants to visit, I would have my daughter sleep on an air mattress. However, the tiny bedroom really needs a smaller bed so that my daughter can have room. Right now, her room has a giant, queen-sized bed in it that doesn't leave room for much else. To make things more complicated, I am in nursing school. So, one to two times a week, I drive three hours to my mill city to attend school. She has a four-bedroom home. I was staying in her guest room that she offered to me, so I reasoned that I should sacrifice my daughter's room for her since she is helping me out with lodging as well. Then, one day, all five of us were visiting her in her home. She decided that one of her guest rooms was off-limits because her adult daughter, who wasn't there, doesn't want anyone staying in her room. She told my daughter that she could sleep on the floor. I told Mill that my daughter doesn't want anyone staying in her room either, but I have been asking her to show hospitality, and that I couldn't believe that a six-year-old has better manners than her 43-year-old daughter. She refused to listen to me. The next day, she told me I wasn't welcome to ever come over to her home again unless her son was there with me and took away my rights to stay there while in school. I told her that if I wasn't welcome in her home, then she wasn't welcome in mine and that my daughter was no longer sharing her room with her. My husband agreed to support me. About one month later, she showed up unannounced on my doorstep with her overnight bags in tow. She announced that she was staying for three days. I told her that I already told her that if I wasn't welcome in her home, then she wasn't welcome in mine, especially not unannounced. She then told me that it isn't your home, dear. My son's name is on the title, not yours. I told her to not disrespect me like that and that she needs to leave. She said, I need to hear it from my son. So he told her to leave. It has been two weeks and I am beyond upset still. Am I in the wrong here? Nah, OP, not in the wrong at all. Good for you for standing your ground. Mill fully intended to try the head be with a niche in charge move and it failed miserably. Hubby has been great in having OP's back, but if he hasn't already, I think he specifically needs to lay it out for Mill and say, Ma, I have a wife and kids now. I know I originally told you that you could stay here whenever you wanted, but things have changed and you cannot stay here anymore. We do not have room. It's as simple as that. But anyways, <laughs> that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed these two just no male stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!